Okay, everybody. Hi, I'm Jerome Rankin. I'm a board member for the Kingfield Neighborhood Association. Uh, so this is our first of these uh, previously weekly gatherings that we've hosted since the murder of George Floyd. Um, you know, a lot of the physical damage that happened in the aftermath of that took place north of our neighborhood. I know uh, that there were very stressful, intense nights uh, and nervy situations throughout the neighborhood over the last couple of weeks. Um, and things seem to have calmed down now and I hope that um, you're all feeling safe and supported. Uh, and I want you all to know that if you're not feeling either of those things, you can definitely and always reach out to uh, KFNA uh, for links to some resources that might be of some help. Um, so I'm, I'm glad you're here. Um, so, well, we're also here with uh, Scott Lloyd Anderson, who's gonna be our guest today. Uh, we've had Scott on the list uh, for folks to chat with uh, for some time, um, although the topic of our chat has shifted quite a bit since we originally spoke, um, but I'm really glad that we've got Scott on to talk to us. Welcome, Scott. Hi, hi everybody. Um, so just to start with some nuts and bolts, Scott, uh, where are you in the neighborhood and how long have you been in Kingfield? I am on the northwest corner of 39th and Blaisdell, have lived in this house since 1986. So I'm one of the resident geezers in the blocks around here. Um, sure. My wife, uh, I moved in as a single man, uh, had a couple roommates, and was generally the property on the house everybody wished somebody else lived at um, based on the party action. <laughs> but uh, my, my, my wife moved in when we got married in 1980, threw all my sh stuff out on the curb and uh, has made a beautiful homestead and garden and everything. Uh, so fantastic. Been here a long time. That's great. Um, so Scott, um, I know that in the newsletter that went out um, and also on your website, um, there's some art from 38th in Chicago, uh, the memorial scene uh, memorializing George Floyd. Um, so I just want to ask to start with, what motivated you to go out there to capture that scene and what were you trying to, to capture? Um, well, uh, my artwork is uh, landscape painting uh, in a traditional or more classical manner and I paint primarily outside. Uh, it's called in plein air mm. is the expression. And um, a lot of you may have seen uh, other painters over and around the lakes area, uh, outdoors painting, and it's becoming uh, quite popular these days. Um, I've been doing it professionally for about 19 years now. Uh, I'm represented in some galleries and we built a studio behind our house uh, here. A lot of you may have passed it uh, on 39th Street. Um, and uh, local architect Robert Gerloff designed it. And um, I have, we have open houses and shows here a couple times, two, three times a year. And a lot of our neighbors and a lot of people in the neighborhood have been here. Um, and so uh, that's the painting pictures of the neighborhood and of the city and of the state of Minnesota, and I've traveled quite a bit too. That's just what I do. Yeah. Um, I painted um, a series of paintings uh, downtown after the I-35W bridge collapsed. I went down there um, and wanted to see uh, sort of curious and horrified like everybody else. And um, I, the last thing I wanted to do was paint a grave site. Um, but as I saw the construction and re the reconstruction happening, um, it was something that really intrigued me artistically and it was a monumental mutual effort. Um, and so I documented that in a series of paintings and had a show at the former Lutheran Brotherhood, now Thrivent. Um, Hmm. building downtown and displayed the paintings in a couple different other venues. Uh, so um, I consider myself a contemporary artist, uh, even though I paint in a classical manner. And so I paint the world around us uh, and most specifically 
my neighborhood. I do a lot of paintings and a lot of people have seen me out and about. And so when George Floyd was murdered, um, I and our, our, my whole family was, uh, was in shock as, as well as everybody else. Um, and went over to see the memorials that we heard were happening over there. And um, immediately I thought about dot painting there, but um, I, I was very sensitized around feeling like, you know, I'm a white man mm -hmm. and the last thing I wanna do is misappropriate what's over there for, you know, for my own purposes. Um, sure, sure. Last thing I want to do, yeah. but um, seeing all photographers there, over there um, yeah. and all the artwork that's going on there and, and, the, and this, this, this milieu of, of mourning and celebration. Yeah. Um, I just, uh, I just, felt like I needed to, I needed to be there now. I mean, yeah. specifically what I, what I'm going to do with them or what I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Um, they're, they're, they're hanging back here, by the way. Um, yeah. I, I, mean, um, yeah. And, I mean, going over there, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's a given that, I mean, whatever happens to them, any, any proceeds that might happen if anybody or any, entity is going to purchase them a hundred percent of anything I get is going to one of many, 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 many funds and yeah. causes that are happening right there. And I've been looking into that as well. So um, Scott, how are you, how are you received when you were there painting? What was the atmosphere like and, and how did that, how did people react to you? Um, it was, it was really, really, really emotional and really really positive yeah people were very interested in what i was doing i was right on the corner the first night i went over there when i painted a uh, cup foods mm -hmm. across the street i was you know there's so many people and when you're in a crowded urban environment the last thing you want someone to do is trip over one of the legs of your tripod and it just makes a big mess but there was this little sliver of space right in between the bus shelter mm which, you know, people were sitting on top of and people were sitting on top. And then like three feet from it is this about five foot high electrical, electric box, utility box thing. And then there's gravel there right in between the driveway of the speedway station and the sidewalk. And I could just kind of squeeze in there. Mm. Um, so I was kind of, I, I, I was out of the way in a sense, but the speedway station it's just amazing. I mean, people have pulled out sofas mm -hmm. and underneath the big awning, there's, there's whole like seating arrangements mm -hmm. of people, you know, camping out or not camping out, but, you know, sitting, watching everything, listening to all the speakers and, um, yeah. and it just, it, it, and all the people cooking. I was right next to you know, a couple of young ladies barbecuing, mm -hmm. you know, and it's really, I mean, that was, you know, typically an outdoor painting takes about two to four hours to do. And so I was there throughout their whole, their whole spread. And yeah. it was really funny to listen to her talking about how excited she was when she was setting up. And then three and a half hours later, she's going, <laughs> I never want to cook another hamburger again. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and so, you know, they fed me, they fed, um, but uh, no, a lot of people were very interested. I wish more people had masks on, to tell you the truth. Um, yeah, that's true, that's true. My mask was between the speakers and the rappers and the spoken word people mm -hmm. at the microphone in the church, across the kitty corner, and the music they were blaring. It was just, it was so emotional, you know, like, and so yeah. heartwarming and heartbreaking. Um, you know, in my day job, one of the things we talk about a lot is the role of art. Um, you know, the, the school of thought that says art is catalog of uh, things that have happened and reflects the community as it is, or as the world as it is. 
Uh, and then, you know, we know there's others who have a more activist view of what art can be as a catalyst for change. Um, how do you think about that sort of dichotomy and in, in the way we think about art? Um, that's, a, that's a good question because I, uh, painting, in a, painting in a classical traditional manner, the contemporary art world mm. um, generally not, you know, I mean, to a large extent sees, you know, the, the curatorial MFA crowd, doctorals and art history crowd, you know, sees what I do is kind of shtick, kind of corny, kind of old fashioned, mm. you know, I'm not breaking any new paradigms. I'm not doing anything original, you know, that, that kind of criticism. And that's my defensiveness about it too. Um, I know, I know a lot of contemporary artists um, and that like what I do, um, but I'm a contemporary artist. I'm not painting, you know, uh, something that's not today. I paint and I want my paintings to feel like they're today. Mm. The urban paintings I have, the cars are this year's models, you know. Um, so, I mean, I want, I would like people to, you know, in 10 years, 20 years, whatever, to ha see my painting and go, oh, that was back then. Mm -hmm. um, rather than a lot of a lot of landscape painters want their images to look timeless you uh, know, sure bucolic nature sure um and it's the way land used to look a lot of years ago mm -hmm. it's nice and i do a lot of that as well um sure. but i really want my work to feel like it's now yeah so you're capturing that moment in time and whatever that whatever that moment might be about um in the neighborhood right. or in the city sure um a lot of contemporary art seems to uh feel like it's almost a prerequisite to being a contemporary artist that you need to be doing something that is addressing a very important issue that's going on today and and for good reason i mean there's you know a lot of very pressing things that the public needs to be alerted to, aware to, aware of. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and generally, you know, my work is not, is more kind of feel good. Right, right. Uh, oh, don't, isn't our neighborhood nice or don't we live in a wonderful place kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I, I, I don't act as an editor as much as I'm, a reporter um yeah. so the george floyd yeah. site over here it's i mean it's eight blocks east of me and admittedly i'm on the west side of 35w mm -hmm. and it's different on the east side of 35w mm -hmm. and i mean as much as i want to say these are my neighbors you know sure. they're not really yeah. Uh, yeah i mean my neighborhood here is I mean, I don't know what the racial breakdown in Kingfield is, but it's certainly. different when you go for the race. Absolutely. Um, Scott, I really appreciate you taking some time to chat today. Um, where can people find you and your, your art if they're curious about learning more? Um, I have an Instagram page, scottlloydanderson.com or scottlloydanderson, hashtag, whatever it is. <laughs> um, and I have a website, although I have websites are kind of, old hat these days but um since there's 10,000 scott anderson's in minneapolis it's important that my grandfather's name is in the middle there um because there actually is another scott anderson that lives about eight blocks on blaisdell south of here okay maybe we'll have him on next week <laughs> um so um yeah, and I'm out and about, so I mean, if you happen to see me, it, um, say hi. I like to talk about painting while I'm outside painting, and um, I feel like I'm a little bit of an ambassador for the craft. Um, Excellent. Well, folks, if you see Scott, uh, don't don't kick over his tripod, but do say hi, ask him some questions about his work. Um, thanks for being part of this conversation, uh, whether you're watching it live or if you're watching it later on YouTube. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, and you know, I said this, uh, the last time we had a chat, but it's even more pertinent now. This is a, a good time for us to stay connected with each other. And so 
if this helps to do that in just a little bit, a little way, then, uh, then it's working. So uh, thanks, Scott. Thanks, everybody. And we'll be back again soon. Bye, folks.